Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen Chapter 1 It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man, in possession of a good fortune, must be in want of a wife. However, little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighbourhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered as the rightful property of some or one of their daughters. "'My dear Mr. Bennet,' said his lady to him one day, "'have you heard that Netherfield Park is let at last?' Mr. Bennet replied that he had not. "'But it is,' returned she, "'for Mrs. Long has been there, and she told me all about it.' Mr. Bennet made no answer. "'Do not you want to know who has taken it?' cried his wife impatiently. "'You want to tell me, and I have no objection to hearing it.' This was invitation enough. "'Why, my dear, you must know, Mrs. Long says that Netherfield is taken by a young man of large fortune from the north of England.' that he came down on Monday in a chaise and four to see the place, and was so much delighted with it, he agreed with Mr. Norris immediately, that he is to take possession before Michaelmas, and some of his servants are to be in the house by the end of next week. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure, a single man of large fortune, four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. How so? How can it affect them? My dear Mr. Bennet, replied his wife, how can you be so tiresome? You must know that I am thinking of his marrying one of them. Is that his design in settling here? Design! Nonsense! How can you talk so? but it is very likely that he may fall in love with one of them and therefore you must visit him as soon as he comes i see no occasion for that you and the girls may go or you may send them by themselves which perhaps will be still better for as you are as handsome as any of them mr bingley might like you best of the party my dear you flatter me I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give over thinking of her own beauty. In such cases, a woman has not often much beauty to think of. But, my dear, you must indeed go and see Mr. Bingley when he comes into the neighbourhood. It is more than I engage for, I assure you. But consider your daughters. Only think what an establishment it would be for one of them. Sir William and Lady Lucas are determined to go merely on that account, for in general, you know, they visit no newcomers. Indeed, you must go, for it will be impossible for us to visit him if you do not. You are over-scrupulous, surely. I dare say Mr. Bingley would be very glad to see you, and I will send a few lines by you to assure him of my hearty consent to his marrying whichever he chooses of the girls, though I must throw in a good word for my little Lizzie. I desire you will do no such thing. Lizzie is not a bit better than the others, and I am sure she is not half so handsome as Jane, nor half so good-humoured as Lydia, but you are always giving her the preference. They have none of them much to recommend them, replied he. They are all silly and ignorant like other girls, but Lizzie has something more of quickness than her sister's. Mr. Bennet, how can you abuse your own children in such a way? You take delight in vexing me. You have no compassion on my poor nerves. You mistake me, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They are my old friends. I have heard you mention them with consideration these twenty years at least. Ah, oh, you do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and live to see many young men of four thousand a year come into the neighbourhood. It will be no use to us if twenty such would come, since you will not visit them. 
depend on it, my dear, that when there are twenty, I will visit them all. Mr. Bennet was so odd a mixture of quick parts, sarcastic humour, reserve and caprice, that the experience of three and twenty years had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. Her mind was less difficult to develop. She was a woman of mean understanding, little information, and uncertain temper. When she was discontented, she fancied herself nervous. The business of her life was to get her daughters married. Its solace was visiting and news. So, Mr. Bingley. Mr. Bingley. Who is, who is he? He is single, and I can see why. No one wants to be called Mrs. Bingley. <laughs> and boy, how the times have changed. Four to five thousand dollars a year. Four to five thousand pounds a year. Pounds, that's, sorry. That's quite a hefty chunk of change. Back in those days, I could have been Bill Gates. And of course, a man with so much money at his disposal, of course, all he would want in life is a wife. And apparently, they have three daughters to offer. Five. Five. They only mentioned three, I think. They talk about three, but there's five. Okay. There's, there's five. There's, uh, there's choices. Options. Options. Variety is a spice of life. It is. It is. And Mrs. Bennett is very, very anxious about it. I was going to say, I get that, like, real housewives vibe from Mrs. Bennett. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She does, she does gossip a bit with the neighbors. Does she? But she says, I heard it from so-and-so who said they saw blah, 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 blah. That's right. Yeah. About Mr. Bingley. That's how she got all her information. She heard it from somebody who said that they saw blah, blah. And Mr. Bennett, man after my own heart, pretty much reacting exactly how I would do all this. <laughs> You're going to tell me anyways. Just do it. <laughs> I love how she spends this whole time getting so worked up over trying to convince him to go and, you know, go call on Mr. Bingley to say hello. Yeah. And he's just sitting there like, eh, eh I don't really want to. And she just keeps getting so worked up that at the very end of it, he's like, well, well done. Of course I'm going to do it. I was going to do it. The whole time. You didn't need to convince me, woman. Calm down. going to do it. Just that I didn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this book is going to be interesting. Mrs. Bennett also accuses Mr. Bennett of treating Lizzie preferentially to all the other daughters. Specifically saying, like, you you always give her preference. You always you're always doting on her. You have four other ones, and Mister Bennett is really pretty much like, well, yeah, the other ones are stupid. She's smart. <laughs> She's got a brain in her skull. The rest of them are idiots. The other ones need a lot more than my help. <laughs> what does she say at the end? Like her only concern in life now is just getting her daughters married. That's it. Yeah doesn't necessarily matter if they love the person they're with or whatever. It's just they have to get married. That's it. Well, I think it matters that they have money, too. <laughs> that would be that would They gotta be, nice. be bringing in them pounds. <laughs> pounds and pounds for days. Yeah, so what, what did you think of the first chapter overall? I, d I don't know. I mean, I never read this, so I don't want to make too many assumptions already, but... Uh... Well, you'd never read Harry Potter either, but... That's true. But at least I saw the first movie in Harry Potter, so I kind of had an idea of things. Fair enough. This it's, is just completely blind right this, now. I, it's kind of fun. I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. All, all I really learned from this chapter is I don't think I'm going to like Mrs. Bennett. <laughs> And Bingley is one of the greatest names for a character, but the worst name to have. <laughs> Bingley. Bingley. What's his first name? Bada. Ha ha ha. I don't think it's a spoiler to tell you what his name is. 
No, no, it isn't. Charles. Charles. Ah, uh, would have been better if it was Richard. Can make a joke there. <laughs> no, Charles. Old Charlie. Charlie Chuck, Bing. Chuck your Bingleys. Chuck Bingley. Chuck Bingley just sounds <laughs> like it should be a character on Anchorman. <laughs> and now to Chuck Bingley with the weather. That's why. I mean. <laughs> Played by Steve Carell. I don't know. There's really not a hot, whole lot to to really say. This is very much just an introductory chapter. Yeah. One of the most famous first lines in literature. I love that of all the little things in this chapter. The things you picked up on are, I don't like Mrs. Bennett, which I kind of knew was going to happen anyway. Mm -hmm. I knew you you were just probably going to read her and be like, yeah, no, I don't know how to feel with that, that woman. (laughs) No, so far. (laughs) Just. And the other thing that you picked up on was that Bingley's name. This really got you. Well, yeah. And I mean, obviously, it seems like a very uh, old society. Women don't have many rights. It's They're Regency. Just there to, uh, it's Regency. Be married yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Those are. I'm trying not to read too much into the characters until we get at least a few chapters in, and I have more than one conversation between two characters to the, the, nail anything down here. So we have established then that Mr. and Mrs. Bennett live in this rural area in England, and this young Bingley has come to live at Netherfield. Bing a daughter. And, yes. Which one of you will be binged? Will it be Lizzie? Lizzie well, Bing. Lizzie Bing. Or will it be one of the other four? Lucky, lucky ladies. Oh, Lady Bing. Guess we'll just have to find out what happens next time in Chapter 2.